everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I wanted to show you some tips or tricks in how to save some battery life on iOS 10. This is my iPhone 7 Plus, and while it has pretty good battery life, there are some ways to squeak a little bit more battery life out of it overall. And these tips come straight from Apple, so let's start with the first one, and that is to be on the latest software. Apple says to get these benefits or their latest battery benefits, you need to be on iOS 10. So to do that, if you're not already, go to settings, go to general, and then go to software update and update if you're not on iOS 10. Once you're on iOS 10, you'll have options to adjust different power modes and things like that that we'll talk about right now. So the first thing we want to take a look at is brightness. Now an easy way to adjust brightness is right here. We just slide up and we've got brightness. So we can move this down or up and the lower the brightness, the less battery it uses. However, Apple suggests you turn on auto brightness and that can be found under settings and then display and brightness and then auto brightness. In most cases, auto brightness will save you the most power. However, there are cases where you're outside, it thinks it's really bright outside, but it might not be so bright that you need the screen at full brightness. So in that case, you can simply, like I said, slide up, turn it down and save some power. That seems to save a significant amount of power if it's really low, but I like to have it auto adjust since it doesn't seem to really use too much battery other than me doing it myself. And I like to have the screen nice and bright anyway. The next thing we want to do is make sure that Wi-Fi is on as long as we're using Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi uses less power than cellular data. So LTE or 3G actually uses more power than Wi-Fi. So you want to make sure Wi-Fi is on with the exception of if you're in an area you know you're not going to have Wi-Fi, you can save some power just by turning it off so that it's not seeking. That's the same as far as Bluetooth as well. If you're not using Bluetooth, turn both of those off and you can quickly do it from right here. And it just makes it really simple and it will save you not a ton of power, but it will save you some power. So the next thing we want to do is actually check out low power mode. Now low power mode is built in since iOS 9, I believe is when they implemented it first. And what it does is it suggests that it turns on at 20% when you get down to 20% or 10%, but you can turn it on yourself. So that's under settings, slide down a little bit until we see battery, go into battery and we can simply switch on low power mode. Now, low power mode, you'll know it's active because the battery is yellow. And what this does is it reduces display brightness more so than it would if it was on auto before. It also optimizes the device's performance. It kind of slows it down and it minimizes system animations that can take up battery as well. Also, apps such as mail uh, won't download in the background. In fact, now that I have it on low power mode, it's dimming by itself. Let me turn that back off. And... It also optimizes apps such as mail so that it doesn't download content in the background and features like AirDrop, iCloud Sync, and Continuity are actually disabled when low power mode is on. Now, since we're already in here, one thing you can do to see what's using your battery is actually under battery usage. So in the last 24 hours, we know that Photos is using my battery and it's also using background activity. If we tap on this, we get a little bit more detail and that's the same as this button here. But if we tap on it, it says five minutes on screen, 21 minutes in the background. Now with a new phone or if you've got a lot of photos, some of these things are going to happen and use your battery initially and it will be much battery life after a couple days. Usually it will take a couple days and then everything kind of optimizes and works really well. We can also see durations such as the last seven days and this will implement or go up as you have the phone a little bit longer. But right here you can see I've had 5.3 hours on screen, five minutes in the background in the last seven days for messages. Same with Google Maps, there's more usage here. And there's background app activity and sometimes we don't want that to occur. Now in a lot of the stock apps it's kind of there all by itself and you can't really change it but on the other apps you can so we want to go back to our settings and then we want to go to general and under general you'll see background app refresh so if we tap on this what this does is gather information for you in the background on apps you use if you're out and about you'll see that background app refresh can actually take up 
quite a bit of power, especially on certain applications that use it consistently in the background. So you have all of these different apps and on some of them like Facebook, which actually takes up quite a bit of power. I turn it off. I don't want it refreshing in the background. I want it on when I'm using it and off when I'm not using it. This is also similar to location data in the background and location data in the background can do the exact same thing. So we can locate that again under settings, but under general, and then you'll see under privacy down here, we have location services. Now lo location services are useful in such things as maps and Google maps, things that are locating you, or if you want to geolocate a photo or things like that. But when you're using an app, you probably want it to use it while it's using the app. If you're not using the app, you probably want to turn it off. And that's what I actually do. So you'll see right here, these all say while using, while using, while using, and these little arrows indicate what was used last. If it's a purple arrow, it's actually used real recently. So let's see if we have any purple arrows right here. It says this application slow pro says it's always using my data. And I actually didn't know that. So let's go into this and we'll say you can use it while you're using the app or never. I don't want it using my data, so I turned it off and we should be good now. You'll see here there's system services and this explains all of it at the bottom, but for the most part, I have it turned on while using or at never. If you have it on using it all the time, you're going to be using data and it's going to be using your GPS antennas, which draw a lot of power in order to locate the device. So I turn off what I don't use. You could turn it off altogether, but then you won't be able to use things like maps and that could be a pain. The other thing we can do has to do with mail. Now mail actually can fetch mail. You can have it push the mail uh, and you can have it checked manually. So if we scroll down to mail, you'll see I have mail here and my mail itself is set up to fetch as often as it can or push and push kind of maintains a constant connection and that uses the most amount of data and fetch uses a lot as well. So if we go into the account, you'll see right here, we have fetch new data. I have it set to push. So I want the data to come in as the mail arrives, push it to my device. However, you'll save the most amount of power if you actually have it fetched to manually. So what it will do instead of pushing that mail or checking every 15 minutes or so that I have it set to, you can check it manually when you open the mail app. So that will actually save a significant amount of power. At least it does for me when you have this many mail accounts, it does make a difference. At least for me, it does. Another thing that can use power is notifications and notifications actually use power in a different way. They actually turn your screen on. So when you get a notification, it pops on your screen that can use a bunch of power. So let's scroll up to our notifications. And at the top here, we have notifications. We'll go into that and you can customize these per application. So say you're getting a lot of notifications from, oh, I don't know, maybe Facebook. We'll go into Facebook and we can turn it off for all of them. We can have it show different alerts, none, and we can customize it. Turning it off will use the least amount of power. Leaving it on will use the most. It depends how much you get notifications. So if you're getting notifications every 15 minutes, it's going to use more power because it's powering on the display, giving you that notification and then shutting it back down. Every time it does that uses a little bit more power. So that's something you want to keep in mind when you're adjusting your different battery settings. Finally, when you're in an area where you have no cell coverage or very low signal, and you know, you're going to be in that area for some time, you'll want to turn on airplane mode. And the reason for that is like I mentioned before, your 3g antenna or LTE antenna uses a lot of power. That cellular data uses a good amount of power. If you flip it into airplane mode, you'll really save quite a bit of power because you won't be able to send or receive using cellular data. So that will not have to power that antenna up and try and transmit back and forth, especially in an area where there is nothing to transmit to. It's going to ramp up the power to try and transmit to a device that may or may not be there. So turning that off while you're on the go, maybe you're in the middle of nowhere, you can save some power by doing that. So those are most of the tips, but there is another few tips that Apple suggests. Also, one of the things I wanted to tell you before we talk about that though, is there is no teaching your battery or having to drain it and bring it down to the bottom of its charge, maybe down to zero and then recharging all the way to full. You don't do that with an iPhone. There's no need for it. In fact, the iPhone itself manages the battery. So there's really no need to do that at all. Some people will say otherwise, but Apple says you don't need to. 
Also, Apple suggests you avoid extreme temperatures, and what they mean is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or above 95 degrees Fahrenheit. In some areas, that's impossible. Where I live, it gets over 95 in the summer all the time, so it's really kind of unavoidable. However, if you can avoid those temperatures and store your phone in an area that's so hot, that's ideal. In fact, they say the ideal temperature is 62 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 16 to 22 degrees Celsius. So that's one way you can kind of save some battery there, I guess, as far as making it last longer over the years. They also suggest that if you're charging it and your phone gets really hot, to actually take off the case because that will extend its battery life over time. So that's just something to know. And that's something new. I don't think I've seen them post that before. So that's interesting. Finally, if you're going to store your phone for a long period of time, you want to store it at about 50% charge in an area that's less than 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That way you'll extend your battery over time. So if you're using your battery and you maybe you've got an iPhone 7, you want to put away your iPhone 6 that you replaced or whatever you've got, store it at 50, around 50% charge. And then they say, charge it to 50% every six months if you plan to keep it. I have to admit, I haven't done that in the past, but it's something they suggest. So that's pretty much it. Those are all of the tips from Apple as far as extending your battery life. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.